<clears throat> you got it. Ladies and gentlemen, the plexiglass has failed. Kirk Cousins has COVID. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the final GTS of 2021. We're here. Oh, we're here. For Help another me. Of I'm broken. The Grassy Show. Otherwise known as in Australia as J. Pay? <laughs> yes. Outback. <laughs> it's Mike. a GP Outback show. Um, you. Oh shoot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we. I don't know where we're going with this. It went southern real quick. <laughs> it went southern real, real quick. And now it ain't Australian anymore, mate. <laughs> right, <laughs> we're gonna go in awesome. and out. A very, very different accents today. <laughs> today it's Aussie. Posse. It's, it's the Aussie Posse. Oh, shit. Oh, it's the Grossy Posse Aussie New Year. The Aussie Posse. Oh, that's it, baby. Tom Grossy, um, Brandon Perna. I don't know what the hell we're doing, but we're here. We are here. And as we mentioned in the cold opening, it, it happened. It finally happened. Kirk Cousins, like, you know what? I want the Packers to do well. Contracting the COVID, had symptoms, self reported. Tested positive. I hope he rests up soon. I do. I hope he rests up soon. But uh, now they're going to have to choose between a QB that they signed this week, someone who's coming off COVID, or Kellen Mond, who's a rookie. Yeah. So. Wow. Oh, yeah. Kellen Mond, who oh, yeah. played in the preseason, did not look great. He like Mond and QB, it's interesting. Did the NFL set up the new COVID rules just to screw Kirk Cousins? Yes. We discussed today. <laughs> so he he tested po- – today's Friday, so he can't play Sunday. The earliest nope. would be like Tuesday. So there's no Tuesday unfortunate football. unfortunate timing for the Vikings who technically are still in it, right? They're still in the hunt. They are. They are. So it, it, it literally is a must-win game for them. Yes. So what do you think Washington yeah. needs to do over the offseason? Hire me change their name to Washington Wildflowers, and be happy. Oh, man. You and I could run the football team better. We could run the Jaguars better. We could run the Texans better than yep. current head of states in those. Um, oh, and, and Antonio Gibson, speaking of Washington, just got COVID, too. Oh, uh, damn. But the Packers, too, they also like have like no special teams players because they're all out on COVID as well, so... That's fun. So yeah. the, the the Vikings still could win. All they had to do is run the ball and return uh, kicks, and that's it. Could happen. It hey, could, it could happen. It could McDonald's. happen. It could happen. But uh, yeah, Brent Pern, I know you want to talk about stuff and things. Oh, yeah. Before we get into the real shenanigans, uh, we'll figure out something to do for this. But yesterday, a fire basically raged through um boulder the boulder area here in colorado boulder longmont and destroyed i think over 800 homes now so uh pretty scary evening for a lot of people you know like i i wasn't close to the danger at all i don't want anybody to think i was at any risk um or anything like that but um it's in Colorado, close to the mountains, you have wildfires. They happen like every year, and they're obviously getting worse because of dry climate right now. And you know that's like a reality that it can happen in the mountains. And this is not the mountains. This is this raged through suburbs. It just engulfed the homes. And it was 
dry conditions, which we've had a dusting of snow basically this entire winter here. So it's incredibly dry. We've been getting like fire warnings on our phone every now and then during the winter. But it was a combination of the dry uh, climate and wind. So there was like 100 and 110 mile an hour winds yesterday here, which is crazy. Like that doesn't happen often. And a down power uh, power line, I guess, sparked the fire in a field. And the wind, because the winds were so violent, they just couldn't contain it. So there are a lot of Colorado families displaced uh, this morning. And like I said, it ran through neighborhoods, <laughs> like places like an area where I used to live in college. So it's it's just crazy. Uh, just wanted to say we're <laughs> I'm aware of what's going on. Uh, it was kind of hard to watch last night. But once we figure out like a way to help, uh, I'm sure Tom and I will will put something together to try and do that. Uh, it's, it's, I shared this. We had our Patreon Zoom last night and somebody DM'd me saying like they appreciated this show GPS. They're like, thank you for GPS. Uh, having a rough time right now. Just watch my entire neighborhood burn down. Uh, but you and Tom, uh, your your sense of humor. Helps me get through it. I, I responded like, sorry to hear that. Let us know like is there anything we can do. <laughs> and his response was, if you can get Pat Shermer in prison, that would be a good <laughs> <laughs> oh. So I'm glad to know, even in the worst of times for some people, uh, they can still have a sense of humor. Um, Listen, this is now, I know you pleaded to the governor. And now... Yeah. Are you going to tell victims of wildfires that their one hope is not going to, their one request is going to be denied? <laughs> yeah. Good luck running no. on that campaign for re-election. Yeah. Good luck. I, I Good had to luck. change the title of that video after this happened because it was State of Emergency for oh, Denver geez. Broncos, which is just horrible timing because That's obviously I posted that video Tuesday and Colorado, they declared a state of emergency. So... Luckily, I think I changed it before that happened, but I was just like in my head. I'm like, somebody's going to look into this the wrong way, and I don't want. It's you know. almost going to be worse than your first video when the Henry Ruggs thing came out. Yeah, <laughs> it's bad timing. timing. It's just, I blame it's just Pat Shermer for the climate, too, which is also like, obviously, like if I made that video today, I would not make that no. same joke in there. But no, 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 no. Yeah, no. Um, yeah. Lots of thoughts going out to the people in Colorado and um, we'll 100% be doing something to help support those peeps. Uh, I yeah, saw it's some videos like, and it's horrifying. No, what's crazy, it's like, and that could happen, that could have happened at any part of Denver. It could have happened in our neighborhood. You know what I mean? With, mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't quite as windy here, but it was windy. And like, you don't think of fires being able to just rage through suburban neighborhoods, just yeah. jumping house to house because of wind. You know, like in the the forest, the mountains, you've got all the trees, you've got all the fuel there. And yeah, that, that can definitely happen. But uh, I think that's what's kind of shocking about it. It's just like, oh, wow, this is an issue I didn't before imagine can happen. So we'll see. We'll see what, what happens as it moves forward. And again, if we can figure out a way to help, we definitely will. So 100%. One, anyway. 100%. People are asking about college football, Cincy versus Bama. Go Cincy! What, Did I say what, that in the broiest? What what team does football? Denzel Washington coach? Uh, that would be the Cincinnati Titans. Oh, okay. Then I want that Denzel Washington, again. best actor ever. So darn left cool. side. So darn oh Strong my! Side. Parna! Parna! Whoa! Holy mother of God! David. <laughs> Send me your five hundo for Perna. That's Ooh. the easiest four hundred and sixty nine dollars and sixty nine cents I've ever. Oh, this is David from Patreon too. Yeah, this is the gross. I talked to David last night. Oh my god, David! No, David's a G. David is a David's G. A good guy. He was thrown into the the Patreon mix in our Zoom. Uh, handled himself very well. Uh, came over to the. The channel because of tom donated to the alzheimer's charity yup david you the friggin man uh appreciated seeing you last night hope to see you at the next one 
Hell yeah. Uh, I will save some of that money for when we need to give back to either the Alzheimer's or Colorado Fire, however we can help David, you the man. You know what this means now, Perna, right? Yep, I'm gonna I'm done with the show. <laughs> so I'll see you later, Tom. I got you. What? Johnny John Joy! <laughs> One. Maybe. <laughs> Johnny John Joy! <laughs> Two. Two. <laughs> Johnny John Joy! <laughs> Three. Three. Johnny John Joy! <laughs> and there it is. And there it is. Four and scooter Elways for you. That's it. You got you got four scooter Elways. You totally let them off the if, bus. That's amazing. If you have four scooter Elways, oh. I suggest taking... Whoa. That's true. The Bucks got it. Everybody's getting it. It's Everybody's like, got the COVID. Dun, 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 dun. Mm. But you know what? I won't get COVID going to see that terrible Kurt Warner movie. But if you want to bet on how bad it's going to be. <laughs> take your four scooter Elways. Bet it on DraftKings Sportsbook. Use code GPS and you will be a billionaire. Done. Read done. Read uh, done. Yeah. Look, uh, if you somebody mentioned Cincinnati, Bama. Look, if you want to take an upset and bet on Cincinnati to win, do it through DraftKings Sportsbook. Code GPS, first time deposit, up to $1,000. DraftKings is going to match that. They're going to match that. Match also, that new customers. on the floor. This weekend, you can bet just $5 on any NFL team to win their game, and if they do, you can win $200 in free bets. Mike Burns, thank you, Mike. Uh, DraftKings Sportsbook customers can also get NFL action with Same Game Parlays. Combine multiple bets from Same Game Parlays. You stack them for bigger payouts all through DraftKings Sportsbook, which is safe, it's secure, it's reliable. You can get your money when you need it, when you want it, whatever you want to do with it. Just when you go there, use our code GPS. That's how DraftKings knows we're doing a good job for them. It's true. And the link is in the description. You don't have to sports bet. It's, no. uh, you know, but if you're going to watch college football and say you're like Tom and I, you don't watch a ton of college football, but you want to make I, the game interesting. Yeah. Bet your life savings on it. I'm just surprised the Cincinnati Bengals are playing against Alabama. I didn't, I, they, they used to do that. Yeah. But, yeah. By the they way, should let, let Joe Burrow go back to LSU and play in the championship game. That'd be amazing. That would be amazing. Yeah. Like, a, like Trevor Lawrence, like, is able to go back. Like, if you're in a, on a struggling team that has it, not going to make the playoffs, go back and, like, win a bowl game. Which, by the way, yeah. if you win money, you could potentially donate hundos, which gets you. Johnny John Joy! <laughs> Five. Five scooter Elways. I feel like that's a record, Brandon Perna, on it the is. last GPS of 2021. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Oh, Raiders might die. Yeah, they might. They might get smoked this uh, this week by the Ooh. Colts. And I know that Perna's gonna be Go very Colts. upset with it. Colts back um, to Super Bowl. Mm. Oh, that'd be interesting. <laughs> Wilson for Rogers. Uh, yeah, I mean, nothing. Yeah, I was actually. <laughs> Thinking of this before the show, it's like we got Scooter Elway. We got Scooter. Um, we need like some. I think we need a legit set of tiers, gold tiers for Ooh. the donations for the Ooh. show. Um, we change them up a little bit here and there, you know, make some cool things because the, the the donations are just insane. They're crazy. They're insane. They're crazy. Um. <clears throat> I don't do this for the money, but it is Perna friggin' just, nice. Perna is able to buy three diapers now. I like can that. buy 300 diapers. <laughs> That's which it. Which will last a week. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I pooped again! Um, uh, look, we're going to talk about a lot of football stuff today. I did want to get are. into the Russell Wilson stuff uh, at some point here. And talk about how misleading... People like to be with sound bites and sound clips. So I pulled the Russell Wilson clips for us to listen to, to see if he really alluded to leaving Seattle or if his words were used against him. 
which I will defend because I know my words will be used against me one day. Maybe a little Hall of Fame talk. Games this weekend. We got a lot on our plate, Tom. A lot to talk about. But and we're going to go until midnight. Yeah. Up all night. Oh, yeah, because it's New Year's Eve. Good God. That's, that's what it was, yeah. It's also you know, I keep forgetting. I don't, I can't, I don't care I know. anymore. I just... <laughs> Well, that's because these past two years have just bled into each other, and it's like, oh, yeah. COVID's still here. Yep. And not to not to play the dad guard, but you got a kid. Like you're just trying to get through the day. You're just trying to survive the day. It doesn't matter if it's a holiday or a, it's all the same. You're like, oh. okay. Sounds a little hectic. Don't chaotic. have kids, and I love my baby. I love her so much. She cried when I came down for work this morning because she <sighs> wanted me. She usually waves like a happy, like, bye-bye, and she'll come over Have a good the, day at work, papa! <laughs> the, the gate and laugh at me today. She was just like, ah. you like I'm just going downstairs, but I feel bad. You should have. You know what you should have done? You should have just brought her on the show. And I that's should've. it. Benny Tech dropping a fitty for Benny a happy kid. new year. A to happy me, new year to your wife, wow. Benny Tech, who is Australian. And so that still counts. So a happy new year yes. to the missus. To the missus. The Aussie Posse, eh? Aussie Posse. That's it. That's it. Somebody had commented when we did the eliminated bit in the last episode. Yeah. Where I just did different accents every time. Yeah. They said that bit was funny. And uh, I was that validated me because the whole time <laughs> I was doing it, I was like, you're an idiot, Brandon. Stop doing this. <laughs> oh, Benny Check dropping a fitty for you, Perna. Oh, yeah, Benny Tech. Happy New Year, Benny. Benny and the Tech. Benjamin. Aussie, Aussie. Benjamin. I, I, I agree. What we should do is like Scooter Railway is a hundo. We should have like a clip for two, then three, then four. Like we should. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Well, you know what? That's how this show is going to be better <laughs> in, in, in 2022. 2022. We're going to do yeah. it. All right. Let's jump into Russell Wilson talk. Let's just jump right into that because that's the thumbnail. And let's talk about it because Perna, uh, you know, some some articles <laughs> coming out. <laughs> That's funny. That's so, really funny. Uh, coming out saying, oh, does this mean he's definitely gone now? So why don't you set this up, Brandon Perna? Yeah. So basically a bunch of news bits came out. Did Russell Wilson hint that this is his last game for the Seahawks? And it's like unprompted Russell Wilson mentions that he's might be playing his last game for the Seahawks. So the clip was like a 40 minute interview. Luckily somebody <laughs> time code stamped that on Twitter for me. I found the videos and I felt like the misleading part was that it wasn't unprompted. He was kind of asked about it. And so I'll play the, there's two clips here that I got to play. And then we're going to talk about maybe some of our goals for uh, the, the next year, Tom. And I've got a, Great Russell Wilson goals clip that was just served up to us to, to help us. But I'll start with the first clip here. Let's Do you watch. believe you can win those three Super Bowls with Seattle Seahawks in the direction that's in the end right now? I, I hope so. You know, obviously we can't do it not being in the playoffs right now. But uh, right. but I think that, um, you know, I think that most importantly is it, 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 it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of things. It takes a lot of you know a lot of a lot of pieces and i think that we have a good a good amount of those pieces and a lot of them um and uh you know i know for me you know when i think about um i know you guys asked bobby about could this be your last game and this and that and all that you know i know i know for me personally you know uh you know i, I hope it's not my last game but you know at the same time i know it won't be my last game in the nfl so that's what stirred up the controversy i cut out a chunk there because it was very long-winded but Russell Wilson huh. and his goals, he was talking about he wants to win three more Super Bowls. That's what that referenced. Um, so it's like the guy asked, do you think you can win three more Super Bowls with the Seahawks? With so Seahawks, like yeah. I think he's prompted a little bit there, and he's referencing them asking Bobby Wagner, you know, who might be done in Seattle. So I don't think it was completely unprompted. I thought it was slightly misleading. But I'm somebody who believes Russell Wilson might be on the move. Uh, a lot, uh, <laughs> It, correct me if I'm wrong, because as a quarter for like dealing with a quarterback who's been saying things for a year, like that was a very Aaron Rodgers answer. Yeah. Like that was like it, it basically was like, oh, yeah, no, I like Seattle. It's not gonna be my like, I love football. Like he goes on Pat McAfee, he's like, I love football. 
Football's yeah. fun. I don't think it's the last time I'm going to play against the Bears. Is it going to be in a parachute for my No. But he also came out and said, like, he still loves it. And, like, the anticipation is he's going to play. But, like, he also said that he could retire after this year. Not Wilson, <clears throat> Rodgers. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that that's just kind of a a con- convoluted way of saying nothing. Yeah. I think and- it's, it's uncertainty. Rodgers and Wilson are both masters at saying choosing their words carefully yeah um like i was looking at the the comments on the because this was like you know the seahawks youtube channel and the comments were like can russell wilson ever talk like a real person <laughs> it's just like he was catching so much heat and it's he's calculated in, in what he's saying he's not shutting the door on the seahawks obviously yeah. i think they both just admit like that there's part of that part of this is out of their control Yes. And they're not going to say anything to upset the fan base and that they that there's just uncertainty. They don't actually know what's going to happen after this season because it takes multiple parties to agree to certain things. Sure. And so there was he addressed it again later. And I just wanted to play the, the second clip there before we get to his goals. Maybe this could be your last game with the Seahawks in, in Seattle. Just just kind of curious if that's something you think is realistic and if that's something that's going through your mind at all, that maybe Sunday could be your last game at Lumen with this. No, I, I guess I was replying back to the to what Bobby had mentioned, and I was just saying that you know I, I think that you know you never know, but I, I think that for me personally, I hope it's not. I was saying, I was saying, I, I hope it's not. Um, but I was also also saying that in terms of the preparation, I also know that you know uh, the reality is is that it won't be my last game in, in, in NFL period. So every day you have to give everything you have. You know, there's no uh, there's no I don't take the day off here or take the day off there or whatever it is. I, I guess I meant that's what that's more so what I meant, Bob. Okay, so that seems like he just wants to play on Seattle. Like, because that's what, yeah. Th- all right, so <laughs> everything that I'm reading, by the way, Mecca Fishman, 1 million percent. 100%. Always, forever. Because um, that just basically was like, I hope I'm still here. Now, yeah. the thing is, because he still has two years on his contract, they have a potential out. That's why these conversations are even being had. He has a potential out for this season. But trading him to a new team, I'm curious... And I, I, like, I'm genuinely curious because he's saying it's basically out of his hands. If you're the Seattle Seahawks, there seems to be this divorce that's coming, right? Triggering all the PTSD from my childhood. But there, there's, there seems to be this divorce coming between <clears throat> Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson. Yeah. So it's a matter of if you're the Seattle Seahawks front office, which one is more valuable to you? I mean, Which is interesting because Pete Carroll is the Seattle front office. <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> He's got so, a lot of power there, which makes it complicated. But yeah, it's yeah you have because they're owned by a, an ownership group, the Vulcan ownership group, and uh, they have to decide how to proceed. And I mean, I think just this week, Marshawn Lynch kind of he was in an interview and he spoke pretty highly of Pete Carroll and kind of reinforced sticking with Pete in a roundabout way. Yeah. And it sometimes when two like, cause Pete Carroll's a great coach. Russell Wilson's a, a great quarterback, but sometimes just after a certain amount of time, you might have more success if you go your separate ways. You know what I mean? And I think that's kind of the legit situation for, for Seattle. And it's also coming up because these rumors started last off season that Russell yep. Wilson wasn't happy there. And then I don't know why he thought the Seahawks did enough this off season to appease him. Um, but it seems like a change has to happen if Seattle wants to be a contender again, or if yeah. Russ wants to be a contender and actually does want to win three Super Bowls. That's a lofty goal. Obviously saying you want to win three Super Bowls is kind of like uh auditioning for your next team like hey i'm not taking any days off come come get me my goal is super bowls so you know we'll see what happens there but it's it's really interesting too because like you i'm looking at his stats right now and like they're not awful they're not like amazing mvp worthy and obviously like you know dealing with injury and all that great stuff but i mean how much do you give up for russell wilson a first round pick and that's it the what's weird about Russell Wilson right now, and I just I 
made my quarterback video live this morning and we talked about it. Will and I talked about it in this, that video that the Buffalo game last year is kind of this weird benchmark where all of a sudden Russell Wilson played really bad. And then after that game, the Seahawks, uh, he only played well against the Jets, the Eagles, which were bad teams and in a win against the, the Cardinals. So he was on an MVP pace in 2020 and then mid season yeah. shit just tanked for him basically in terms of production. Then he goes into the playoffs, plays bad against the Rams, completes 40% of his passes is playing like good to start this season, but not yeah. where, where we're used to seeing Russell Wilson. Then he gets hurt and then he comes back. Doesn't look the same. So you have to start to question like, where is he actually at skill wise? Is he a top five QB still? Can he be a top five QB again? Probably. But there's also this thing, the style of football Russell Wilson plays is a lot of uh, extending plays. It's yeah. freelancing a little bit. He's never been like this timing pocket passer where you tear apart the defense. Uh, but that's what's made him great. But unlike a guy like Aaron Rodgers, who the older you get, the more that plays in your – and Rodgers can freelance with the best of them still. But sure. He can also tear you apart from the pocket. Uh, Russell Wilson is like his age, the way he plays football. How good is he going to be from 33 to, if he wants, he wants to play 10 more years, 33 to 40. Like, I don't see him being where he was without changing the way he plays the position a little bit. Mm. I think Russell Wilson can do it, but I think sure. you got to be, you got to be able to evolve. And I don't know if, I don't know if that's, true like, or if you do it and that's what confuses me because if he's talking about how much he wants to win super bowls and if he's talking about like i don't see him being like oh yeah i'm gonna waive my no trade to go to the giants like and i mean that with like the most amount of respect i possibly could have for the giants which is not it's minimal but like Very the small. weapons that you have there kenny galladay they gave him a kajillion dollars how many touchdowns does he have this year zero zero right saquon barkley is injured almost every single year and, you know, I think he can get good again. Don't get me wrong, but they're going to have to make a decision about what's going on with Saquon Barkley. The offensive line is decimated. The defense, as we've talked about, is, is pretty solid. The secondary is meh, but like they're they're pretty solid. Like that's not where you're going to go. Like I, I, I like to be honest, like Russell Wilson on the Broncos, there's a ton of weapons, right? And you, you have a good run game. You have a ton of receivers, et cetera. My concern would be how much are you really going to realistically give up for him? Because if you compare a Russell Wilson to an Aaron Rodgers, Rodgers, I would be not surprised at all if he commands three first round picks. Wilson? Uh, I mean, I know yeah, it's hard to QB, give up, but I think, yeah, I think it's hard to give up three for Russell Wilson. And yeah. I honestly think Wilson's best fit is with the Saints. I think Sean Payton and Drew Brees did so much together especially when Drew Brees was falling apart physically. Yeah. Uh, Russell Wilson will get the throws that he wants there, and he's going to get a lot of throws that are, I think, in favor of his skill set. Um, I think that's his best fit. Now, the Saints got cap issues. They've got all sorts of things to make it work. I think they'll figure it out. I don't know if he actually goes there. Uh, the Panthers are another team that's kind of creeping up on a, a home for one of these QBs that can move this offseason. Part of me right now thinks there's this scenario where the Packers trade Aaron Rodgers. Okay. Let's just say they trade him to the Broncos. Okay. And they get the three, three first rounders for him. Okay. Or all, all their draft picks. And then the Packers trade for Russell Wilson and the, the Seahawks get all their draft picks. And then the Seahawks trade for Deshaun Watson and the Texans <laughs> get all their draft picks. And it's and just the this Texans of trade people for Tua. changing traffic. <laughs> that's a, it's a complete reverse. The Texans trade for Tua, and that's it. Inject drop in a fitty. I yeah, think most inject the change in scenery. Too many no O line. Yeah, goes to the Saints. I think honestly, I think the Saints are a great fit for Russell Wilson. Yeah, I do. I they think have a great their, offensive line. They're, they have a great they're, offensive they're line. literally just starting seventh stringers right now. Can you imagine like a good QB and like? New Orleans right now also like they were decimated by injuries but they have the defense their defense is top notch and on top of that like if they actually had someone who could play at the quarterback position besides James Winston you know but like I think that they could do well 
So. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, a team. We de- Here's the thing: could give up more than three first round picks. I think that's the ceiling. Uh, I, unless you're saying it's three first round picks, and then like there's a player or two that's thrown in there. But I yeah. think only Rodgers commands that, to be honest. Like, and that's not being like, mm, look how much better he. I think it's just like look at the performance that Rodgers has done in the past two years, and then compare that to Wilson. You know, and, and, and as Turner was saying, like he is, I can run if I want to. You know, I can extend the plays. I can destroy you from the pocket. I mean, like Aaron Rodgers, you put him on a decent team, it makes you a Super Bowl contending team. How do I know that? Because we had Mike McCarthy. So yeah, like I know. That. And the three first rounders, you run into the issue of like you can't trade draft picks out of a two or three year window. Correct. So like you can. <laughs> Teams only have the, I think it's, is it two or three years? I should look that up, but I think it's two. That's a big reason. Yeah. Wait, like you can't be trading like 20, 26 first round yeah, draft no. picks right now. Like, how far into the future can you trade draft picks? Uh, let's see. Three years. I think. Three years. There we go. Internet. You're awesome. That's what it says. I think. Yeah, something like that. Apparently, in the NBA, you could do it seven years in advance. Jesus. Damn. That's like, you just don't care. You're like, why not? Why not? I'll give up my 2028 pick. So, interesting. So, this, random, yeah, I know. I, I'm hoping this offseason is insane. Oh, it's going to be. It's going to be heartbreaking for Packers fans. It's going to be heartbreaking. The best thing for Tom and I personally would be for either Aaron Rodgers to get traded to the Broncos or Aaron Rodgers stays in Green Bay and the Broncos get Russell Wilson and mm. both teams are very competitive. Super Bowl. Yeah. Just just Broncos, Super Packers, Super Bowl rematch. Oh, yeah. Wilson to the Titans? No. You got uh, Tannehill. Yeah, I'll, say, I'll stick with Tannehill. I think it's Russell Tannehill. Wilson's not going to hand off 30 times a game to Derrick Henry. Can you act? Holy crap. Can you actually trade traffic seven years in the future in the NBA? That's in, that's wild to me. That's like you do that. And it's like, oh, not only like I just dest- if I suck, I just destroyed this franchise for the next like seven years. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. NBA nuts. Well, if you want to potentially destroy or make your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a great transition. <laughs> Let's um let's reset that with a picture of Gardner oh. Minshew. Okay. You want to take a look? <laughs> DraftKings sports but gonna help you do your sports betting. Oh, it's an app. Oh, you can download it. Oh, you can use code GPS when you do, and they'll match your first time deposit of up to a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars, thousand dollars. Link in the description. Promo code GPS. You got football all day Sunday. Only Bye. Sunday, and right Bye. now, DraftKings, you can bet five dollars on any NFL team to win their game Gosh, this weekend. Honest. Maybe the Packers over the Vikings without Kirk Cousins is a solid oh, yeah. bet to that? turn that five dollars into two hundred dollars in free bets. So then you get free bets to play with, so you can turn free money into actual money for yourself. Money. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. What's the code? Oh, yeah, it's GPS. And if you can't do sports betting in your current state, you got fantasy, the DraftKings fantasy app, where it all started for DraftKings. Daily fantasy. They're dropping tens of millions of dollars every week in prizes that you can win there. So DraftKings Sportsbook. Sirens. Only is it America's top-rated sportsbook app. Yelp. It's also... It's just America's. I really lied there. <laughs> it's a it, it's sirens. You know what? Yeah, it actually that's a pretty beep, 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 beep. no no. We're talking about fantasy, so we're talking about sirens that are staying on the islands and they're singing to draw sailors into their doom. Uh, like uh, that's kind of sports Simpsons gambling in a nutshell. But like yeah. you're like whoa, like I could make out with a hot lady, or I could get eaten by a monster and crash my ship. It really is one or the other. So, mm. was that Plato that wrote the the Odyssey? Is that who it was? Homer nope. wrote it. Homer. Homer wrote it. 
What did Plato in the Odyssey? Yep. Oh yeah, he wrote plays. That's right. He was blind. He and then he was the star of The Simpsons. Yes. Working at a nuclear power plant. I remember reading the abbreviated version of the Odyssey. I was like, this is too long. This is too I long. had to read it for English and I didn't. <laughs> oh I didn't. Canada. I, I, that's it. All right. So we talk about Russell Wilson. Uh you put this person in there. I'm so glad you did. Let's talk about brother of Green Bay Packers wide receiver Equinemia St. Brown, Amon Ra St. Brown. Amon Ra, 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 St. Brown. Sing it, Lady Gaga. Want your bad offense. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. So, Amon Ra St. Brown, what'd you say? I missed it. I said, want your bad offense. Because, like, instead of bad rope, <laughs> like, come on. Right? There you go. That was pretty there good. You go. That was now pretty we're good. Cooking. Now we're cooking. We're cooking. Oh. All right. I thought this was interesting because I think most people are aware of the rise of Amon Ra, 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 Ra St. Brown, who just won NFC Offensive Player of the Month. Yeah, he did. Timmy Galladay, a receiver I really liked. Oh, yeah. Goes to the Giants. And as you mentioned, no touchdowns for the Giants. Not necessarily his fault. You got to have a quarterback to get you the ball. 34 catches for 499 yards this season. The Lions draft him on Ross St. Brown. He's got 74 catches, 692 yards, three TDs. Been huge. I think back to back like 10 catch games for a Mon Ra 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 St. Brown. <laughs> uh, just a solid pickup for the Lions. Wanted to shout him out. Yeah, I mean it. Uh, he caught the game-winning touchdown against the Vikings, so he already is like my favorite player on the Lions. Yeah. So, oh yeah, like, and it, it was the forever. quote I found on uh, on Reddit from Twitter because uh, somebody asked him how he manages his ego despite his recent breakout. Well, one, yeah. he still played for the Lions, but he I said it's easy. Every time I hear something positive about myself, I just remember how it felt seeing sixteen receivers taken ahead of me. And if he's having this kind of success with the Lions, honestly, what would he be doing with a, a QB that actually slings it? The Green Bay Packers reunite the St. Brown brothers. Equinemius and Amon Ra will lead us. Brothers separated at the draft. Return. And now reunited. Coming in 2025. Yeah. Amon Ra Equinemius. Come on, ra 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 ra, Equinemia Saint Brown Brown Brown. If you combine those names, it's like Come a on, ra Equinemia Saint Brown of the Cathedral. Amon Ramanius. Yes. <laughs> Ramanius Ramanius. Ramanius Ramanius Ramanius. Ramanius. We were we were on the same wavelength there. We were on the same wavelength. Yeah. All right. So yeah, the Lions actually doing something. Uh, holding in. Now, what? What, what the hell is this, Perna? What is this? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> on the rundown. Why are people dicks all the time? <laughs> yeah. What is that? Uh, yeah. Let me just show everybody what you're talking about. <laughs> I like didn't see that in the rundown. I was like, okay, we'll go to best moments now, and then. <laughs> You know, Brian, do you want to do you want to get something off your chest for uh for yeah for yeah for, for the new year you want to leave it in the you want to leave it in 20 listen buddy this is the time that yeah, let's talk about that really like let's let's talk about it it is a valid question honestly all right let's go leave it in 2021 because everything you say here is left in 2021 and can never be used against yeah, you again never be used against you uh what's the what's the law um double jeopardy yes or final jeopardy Final Je Jeopardy. Yeah. So it, this is just like the internet. This is Twitter to me. And, I, you know, I, I tweeted about Kirk Cousins. He's going to make $45 million next year yeah, for the Vikings. And some someone, someone was like, uh, he's going to make $35 million. It's a 10, it's a $20 million signing bonus that was converted, held over from whatever, Tell me you don't understand the salary cap with, you know, whatever that thing is. 
And uh, so many of this is both wrong and being. A I was about to say that's wrong. Like, like for no reason. He's still gonna get paid. He's gonna his salary his his base salary is thirty five million dollars with a ten million dollar signing it's bonus. 10 million it's signing a forty five million dollar cap hit. It's forty five million dollars in dead cap. So if the Vikings cut him, they it's can't even get that forty five million dollars. I was like, you wow. can tell me the semantics of the forty five million, but if you're gonna but be a dick, you better so be right. That's my point. You can be a dick, but you better be right. Confidently incorrect. Wrong, yeah. I said it's funny because it is such a huge number for a quarterback that has a win percentage with the Vikings of 52, barely above average. And it's not all Kirk Cousins' fault. He puts Winning up the stats. We've QB. talked you we've talked about you can't figure him out. Can't he he's Makes no sense if you look at his stats versus how he wins games. My point is, it's like no matter what you tweet, even if it's just a simple fact, people are going to get mad and they're going to be a dick. They're jerks all the time. Am I guilty of it? Sure, of course. Maybe my original tweet saying LOL after Kirk Cousins making $45 million, you could say, oh, that's just Perna being a, a jerk. No, that's yeah. that's a ruffle moment though. That that really is. Like that's that oh by the way, Sean Mannion is going to start on Sunday for the Vikings. Yeah. I hope he gets the win. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Thanks, Perna. I forgot he was playing the Packers. You dick. If it, Just, if you're gonna be a dick, at least be right. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair wow. Enough. Uh speaking of being dicks, uh why isn't Leroy Butler in the Hall of Fame yet? asks every single Packers fan and person who has ever known anything about the NFL because Leroy Butler is better than so many of those defensive backs that have already gotten in to the Hall of Fame. But I digress. He is a finalist once again. Yeah, we had to we really had to fight to get Champ Bailey in. And Steve Atwater, too. Uh, but these are the finalists right now. I think somebody that gets forgotten a lot on this list is Zach Thomas. Mm. Um, Miami Dolphins linebacker. Dude was insane. He was such a good linebacker. DeMarcus Ware, of course. Uh, you know, they got him. Got a picture of him up there in a Cowboys uniform. But everybody knows he's a Denver Bronco. That's where he won the Super Bowl. So, uh <laughs> They better put that Broncos jersey on him if he goes into the hall. I wanted to ask the chat. Who's a guy on your team that should be in the Hall of Fame that isn't? Like every fan base, I think, ha you you just mentioned it, Leroy Butler, right? Leroy Butler. Leroy Butler for the Leroy Packers. Leroy Jenkins. The Broncos had to fight to get uh, Steve Atwater in there. Champ Bailey we had to, we had to push for. Um, the next guy I think for Broncos fans is Rod Smith, but I mm. wanted to know, like, everybody's got their guy. So I wanted to see, uh, who, who that is for the different fans across the people watching this video at this current moment. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Rami Lash. Johnny Manziel. <laughs> Hilarious. Dallas Clark. Ooh. Oh, I don't know if Dallas I Clark's the Hall of Famer. In quite some time, Dallas. Oh, yeah. This is this is the other guy, Randy Gradishar for the Broncos. Legendary linebacker, has better stats than many linebackers from his generation, which is old. That's why he's getting old. Dude, why isn't Tasker in the Hall of Fame? Uh, you got London Fletcher. You got Antonio Gates. You got mm -hmm. Kurt Benkert. <laughs> yeah, we do. Benkert to the Hall of Fame. Oh, Chad Johnson. Interesting. Mm. Yo, Pat B, 1 million percent. Put Sterling Sharp in there. That guy has a full career and doesn't get injured. He's up there, like top three wide receivers of all time. That's not Sterling close. and Shannon Sharp. I support it. 
Let's go, Sterling. Get in there. Get in the hall. But Leroy Butler needs to be in there, like, right now. Right Jim now. Jim Marshall. Uh, I, I disagree. I think Blair Walsh should be in the Hall of Fame. Every single Vikings kicker who has missed a game-winning field goal should be Boom. in there, um, as well as Cody Parkey. The Hall of Shame. Nope, that's fame for me. Jay oh, Cutler, yeah. 100% Hall. Tell me Jay Cutler doesn't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. One of the best Packers quarterbacks of all time. Easy. Easy. Isn't, isn't Isaac Bruce a Hall of Famer? I thought he was. I thought he was. Larry Fitzgerald. Oh, Fitz, Fitzy will go in. He's just not eligible yet. He just Fitzy will still go hasn't in. technically retired, right? I really want him to come back in the playoffs. Like, he's like, all right, guys, you played the entire regular season. I'm going to come back for the playoffs now. <laughs> I, I would love to see that. And then I'd cry because Larry Fitzgerald hurts me. But he's so nice about it. But he hurts me. But Larry Fitzy. All right. Larry, all right, so we wanted to also see uh, some of the best moments from 2021. The 2021, yeah. yeah. Uh, taking a look there, we have a, a list here. You know, we're going we're gonna to list them off, and I'm curious what the chat feels about it. Uh, yeah. You know, what's some of your favorite moments from this season? And I love that one of Brandon Perna's first things was Aaron Rodgers trade rumors to the Broncos. <laughs> yep. Draft day when we thought we might get Aaron Rodgers, one of the Dude. best moments. That should tell you how bad being a Broncos fan is. <laughs> the moment where we thought we might get Aaron Rodgers, but we didn't, was still pretty good. <laughs> You're like, that was my Super Bowl. And then we did well, but it was my Super Bowl. Yeah. Oh, here's I one. I actually, I did put this on the list. My curse is one of my best moments. Harness curse. Yep. You know, because I didn't even try to create it. That's probably why it worked. It's like when yeah. I don't try to do something, it succeeds. And when I try hard, I just screw it up. So Tom was like, should we talk about some of the best games? And I was like, I can't even remember what games happened last week. That's valid. And I'm not even being like facetious. My memory no. is horrible. I would be the best witness to ruin a slam dunk case in the courtroom. Sir, where, where were, were you, you on October this 3rd? Couldn't tell you. <laughs> I was with my uh I was at my grandma's house. Uh your grandma died 3 years ago. <laughs> oh, we shit, have you're right. We have um, footage of you standing on the corner where that hit and run occurred. I don't think I've ever yeah, been there. You're gonna have to be more specific. <laughs> uh, yep, yep. Um, so yeah, we had that. I I put the Cardinals Packers game. That was great. Gave me an interception. The Packers Bengals game, where no one wanted to kick the field goal to win the game. That was probably one of the most stressful things ever. Um. You put the Broncos starting 3-0. That was a good moment. 3-0, baby. I bought into the hype. I said, live in the moment because we don't know how this will play out. And unfortunately, I was right. Also, then beating the Cowboys, scoring like 30 points on them. That was pretty before. great. That was pretty sweet. Oh Gardner Minshew, watching him get to start one game. Huge moment for me. Loved Perna. watching it. What? Do you remember this? Like, I forgot about Mike White. <laughs> like, I forgot. The entire nation was like, Mike White is a god for a whole oh, week and shit. a half. I, yeah. I literally forgot. Yeah, that's going to have to go in my every team's best and worst moment from the year episode. Honestly, the best probably moment for me is not, I, I've said this, not even a Packers moment. It's the, it's the Vikings losing to the Lions. Because that game was so perfect. It featured yeah. the Lions getting off to a big lead, blowing that lead. Vikings win it, like taking it the last second, and then a literal last second catch by Amon Ross St. Brown. I celebrated like I won the Super Bowl. And that stream was legendary. It was amazing. Yeah. And it also produced the the G Mac Cash song. Lions won a game. <laughs> Lions won a game. And the follow-up, Lions won another game. Um, so those are solid moments. Lions got Super Bowl. Lions. Dolphins losing seven, then winning seven. Enjoyed that. Enjoyed that yep. quite a bit. Your reaction to drafting Sertan was interesting. Yeah. Now I'm happy the Broncos did not take a quarterback in this Correct. draft because they all suck. 
I I said um, the best moment of the Raven season was August 28th because that's before all of their running backs got hurt went away. <laughs> so that was their last moment that the Ravens fans really experienced true joy there. Yeah. So. Ravens Raiders, dude, that first game and going into overtime, like that was a wild game. That feels like literally years ago at this point. Years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I think but that was funny. Also, oh, here, look at this. Oh man. Where is it? Where is it? It was also coach. <laughs> Live fast, die young, bad girls do it well. Boom. <laughs> People called me an MIA stan after. I don't even remember what video that was, but I uh, definitely just cut to me dancing to MIA. I took the copyright uh, claim on that video yep. just for the joke. Um, yeah. The um, yeah, I mean, uh, looking at the you said Aaron Rodgers showing his foot. Oh that yeah. Blew up the internet. Yep. Aaron Rodgers. Uh, seeking medical advice from Joe Rogan. Also love it. Um, am you not that whole God? It was like a fever dream because he had a fever too. But like that was like a fever dream. It just chaos. Yeah, just honestly, get... two two moments too. Um, John Gruden resigning in shame. Love it. Love it as a Broncos fan. Don't love why he had to do it, but John Gruden resigning in shame. And then Urban Meyer letting his pantaloons be treated like a, a table that needs a good good cleaning, a floor that needs a good wax. And the only way to do it is with the behind of a co-ed and it getting caught on camera in his own bar in front of a mural of him and his wife. <laughs> Urban Meyer is probably the number one moment uh, and I think John Gruden would agree. Urban Meyer <laughs> took a lot of heat off of him. So uh, definitely a couple of my favorite moments from the season. Nailed it. Just nailed it. This this, this mm. season has had so much too. Like it's, it's hard to even try and be like, oh yeah, this was the best part. Yeah. Oh yeah, the spam call. Somebody brought up the spam calls. Oh, yo, talk about uh, that fundraiser. Yeah, Tom Grassi raising over $50,000. Yeah, baby. Legend. Yeah, baby. Freaking legend. Mac's girlfriend helping Mac with the playbook. Is that true? Mac Jones? That's kind of amazing if that's true. It's a solid girlfriend. Yeah. There you go. Mike Evans. Yep. I saw that got clear from COVID. Yep. He got oh. clear from the COVIDs. That was great. He's got a oh. lingering hamstring, though. That's true. Yeah, Papa Grassi waiting at the train station at one o'clock in the morning because people wouldn't stop donating to charity, and I refused to not call them out for it. <laughs> I was like, I gotta shout him out. Sorry, my dad's just like, where are you? Urban Meyer for Broncos head coach. No, that's it. Don't you that's dare! It. I know what the best moment of 2022 will be for me. Don't the moment it. Pat Shermer is okay. fired and put in prison, <laughs> and then in promptly prison. taken. He will res he will be fired, and there will be a cop car waiting right outside for him, where they slap on the cuffs before he can even get his pink slip. It's Put like um, in that scene in the office when Toby leaves, like he just leaves, and security, like Michael, has security coming yeah. to escort him out. You're like, is this really necessary? Yeah. <laughs> and then oh, I will man. probably be Michael Scott screaming, "No, no, no, Jesus, God, no!" When. <laughs> We Come actually learn who the next Broncos head coach is. I am ready oh to God. be disappointed. Tom throwing a TD in Madden while Kurt Benkert watched while I was Kurt Benkert in Madden. That was oh. pretty phenomenal. That is pretty Inception. phenomenal. Yeah. So, all right. Do, uh, so we did that. Do we want to do goal? Do we want to save goals for last? We'll just preview some games real quick. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Preview some games. We got some games, some good games. Chiefs Bengals could be a real fun game. Can uh, look at us clicking at that at the same time. I got to drop um, that skate video, Nathan. Don't you worry. Do it, bro. But yeah, Chiefs Bengals could be fun. I mean, Bengals, this would oh, be yeah. an absolutely enormous game for them. They could win the North if the Steelers lose and the Bengals win. 
So that would be big. You know, the Chiefs had the longest win streak uh, this season because the Patriots lost, and they're looking pretty damn good. And yeah. the Chiefs could, like, wrap up the number one seed. So Ken Kitty goes meow. Another great moment, by the way. Ken Kitty goes meow. Get it done. Up. Done. Yes. Keep I am up. hoping for the Bengals to win. Not just because I hate the Chiefs, but because I want the Chiefs to have to play their starters in the final week of the season because I want Ooh. the Broncos to lose out. I want mm. top 10 draft position. And the only way the Broncos can do that is if they lose to the Chargers and the Chiefs. So Joe Burrow, take it to the limit one more time. Steve oh, yeah. Spagnuolo, Spagnola. I why I can never remember actually how to say his last name. What is the Chiefs' defensive coordinator? Oh, Spofford. Spa, Steve Spatula is praise Joe Burrow. Said he looked like Tom Brady already. That this is yes. not a guy who mentally looks like he's in his second year as a QB. Uh, Chiefs' defense a lot better than what the Ravens put out against Burrow. So it's going to be tough. But go Bengals all the way this time. Inject with a hundo. Happy New Year's to you, bro. It's celebrated by popping fireworks and drinking some alcohol. Yeah, Whoa! Yeah. Eric <laughs> Wynn with a hundo! Another Last hundo. 2021 Super Chat. Thanks for a great NFL season, guys. Happy New Year. Oh, man. Johnny John John! <laughs> One more. One more. Johnny John John! Woo! John oh, yeah. better never ask for royalties. Oh <laughs> God, we're screwed. That that's what that's seven. We did. Yeah, I think I'm gonna I got start really confused because say- this was mirrored, yeah. and I thought this was my right hand, and I literally looked into the screen, and I was like, "Am I in the Matrix?" That was that was a oh. scary moment. I think I'm gonna start a Saints YouTube channel just for inject chicken, <laughs> <laughs> and just be like, "Let's talk about the Saints." He's gonna just fund it himself. Yeah, I'm going to just ask Inject, give me the three things you want me to discuss about the Saints today. Yeah. And then I'll do it. And I'm just going to do it. <laughs> um, Why is Perna talking about the Saints so much more than the Broncos? It's honestly paying for his kids to college tuition. <laughs> yeah. He literally became a millionaire because he started a Saints. Ch- if Russell Wilson goes to the Saints, consider Done. me Nola number one. Uh. <laughs> what should my channel name be? Nola number one. Uh. Nola number one. <laughs> uh, Dolphins Titans, very good game. I'm not gonna watch it, but very good game. <laughs> oh, I yeah, I want it to be. I'm a little scared. The Dolphins are gonna get their ass kicked, Tom. Oh, yeah. Ooh, a little scared. You think? I've so? been high on the Dolphins. One long win streaks scare me. They usually mm. end badly. Two, this is the first good team the Dolphins have played in a while. Uh, Three, Tennessee, with A.J. Brown back, just learned throw it to A.J. Brown 100 times, yeah, and you'll be all right. Yeah. So, And and they get a little extra rest, too, Tennessee, a team that needs it. So I'm a little scared there's an upset there. Okay, that's valid. Broncos, Chargers, go go Chargers, go! (laughs) What what I said was probably the game of the week. Uh, Cardinals Cowboys. This is basically like they're in the playoffs already, but like the Cardinals need to like find their mojo. Like they need to get it back. And plus, it really helps the Green Bay Packers if they beat the Cowboys. And I want Scooter to just lose the number one seed on Sunday. I want that so bad. And Scooter's dad because he was mean. So I want I want them. I want nothing good for the Cowboys. Nothing. So that should be a really good. Game. I'll be streaming that game. One million percent will be streaming that game. So that should be a lot of fun. I think the Cardinals have a shot, especially if James Conner and Chase Edmonds are back. Like that adds such a different layer to their offense. So mm. I think it's definitely possible. Um, but Sunday night, Vikings, Packers, Kirk Cousins out. They're just going to hand it to Dalvin Cook 115 times. So that'll be that'll be it. Go Chargers, go! <laughs> <laughs> go Chargers, go! That could be another clip. I was about to say that's definitely a that's that's definitely a tier. That's definitely a tier. Go Chargers, go! 
Don't you dare claim this video, ESPN. Don't you in that, dare. You know what? Would Rogers showing his foot, like him like actually pulling it out, I feel like that could be... Oh, yeah. That could be a, that could be a tear. Could, could yeah. be a tear. Uh, and then Monday night in the AFC North, the Browns and Steelers. I, have, I don't know. I picked the Browns to actually win. Yeah. I mean, I, I think this is... Confidence. Zero this confidence. is technically Big Ben's funeral, so. Uh, Will he go out beating the team that absolutely annihilated him? No, he sucks right now. <laughs> just right now? <laughs> yeah, his he's just, his body's done, man. It's hard. It's not a wonderland? No. I mean, John Mayer couldn't save that body. Like he's just staring at Ben Rosberg and he's like, "Your body is Ben. I can't. Your body <laughs> is decaying. It looks like rotting chicken." Not to be confused with inject chicken. Inject chicken. Yeah, his, Ben like Roethlisberger played well against the Vikings, but yep. his last two games against well, Tennessee, oh, 148 well, passing well yards. <laughs> well, yeah, he got 308 passing yards, three TDs, one pick. Uh, 159 yards against the Chiefs. So uh, I feel like the Browns are going to sack him a lot. It's going to be yeah, close yeah. because the Browns just, they're not the same team they were last year. But I kind of want to see Roethlisberger lose his last game in Pittsburgh. Why isn't, oh, in Pittsburgh, yeah. 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 And finally, to wind this thing, go Chargers, go. That's a great clip. That really oh is a great God. clip. Go, Chachas, go. And that just makes me think of uh, Rob Lowe in the NFL hat. Like, just the complete opposite. Just like, go sports. Go sports. Perna, some goals. Either for your team, your channel, your life, your dream board. My dream board, number one, get in Jack Chicken to be a Broncos fan. Got it. Number two, go for this sh this show. Oh. We take the off season. We're not going to be going three days a week, I don't think. We're going to recharge, make GPS even better for the 2022 season. Yeah. Hopefully get some resources behind it at some point. Oh, yeah. Get us more clips. I just want to make this show better because I believe in the show. I believe in the people watching the show, showing up, keeping us motivated. I actually, yeah, I want more for this show than I even want for my channel as a whole. Like, like if you and I could just do this five days a week together on a real outlet in addition to YouTube, that'd be freaking awesome. I don't know if we can get there. I don't know if we will get there next year. Uh, if YouTube's taught me anything, your three-year plan is actually a nine-year plan. So and this was the first season we did this show. Didn't miss a single episode. Did we wait? Did we miss one episode or no? We made it. We made it all. Nope, because you had a baby emergency. I had a puppy emergencies, but we did it at one o'clock at one point. But nope. Yeah. We did it every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Through Boom. all the chaos. We did it. Through the chaos. So okay. Yeah, make the show better, make people love it more, keep providing the value to it. And that's like, that's what it is. It's like people showing up and donating all this money. It's just like, God, if I, if we don't freaking deliver, that sucks because we got people believing in the show. And it's just like, True story. you know, we come in, we show up, we put in the effort, but it's like, we got to do more and I want to make it better. So that's the big one for 2022. And Aaron Rodgers didn't brag his quarterback. No, no, no. GPS five day weekend. Yeah. That's it. Ain't happening without help, but if we can get help. Oh, dear, dear God. There it is. There it is. Tom, your goals. My goals. For 2022. <sighs> well, this year was a test year. <laughs> this is my sixth year. Can Tom Grassley swim without teaching? Yep. And oh, oh baby. Swam. 
We we won, we won swam. gold medal swimming. We <laughs> I swam the damn Atlantic, and then they were like, "Sorry, you can't come in Brexit." And I was like, "Fair enough." And then I swam all the way back. Oh yeah, Brexit. so that's pretty great. But it's like Perna said too. I had a lofty goal of getting two hundred fifty thousand subs by the end of the year. We didn't hit it. It's okay. It happens. Yeah. We both hit yeah. very short of our subscriber goals. We we uh, we definitely we definitely were short, but it's okay. Because we got we got nothing but time until YouTube is just like, hey, you guys shouldn't stream games because we want to make all the money doing that. And then my entire revenue stream goes down the toilet and then I go into poverty and I cry. But uh, besides that, no, I, I do want to I want to make this show better. Um, I want Perna to live in the crawl space in my house um, just so I can knock every now and then and you just pop out. And go, I, I want uh, that's kind of a goal. Um it, views are up views are up it, it is very true no i i just want to kind of see how i can make this show even better which means that that five hours of sleep i got pff, we got those are rookie numbers we gotta lower that down to two and then and then we could do it but the real goal is perna and i both pass five point vids and subscribers oh yeah screw five points we gotta we gotta we gotta do that we gotta we gotta do that there will be a supercut. There will be a supercut. Nice. Yes. So, hashtag Pern to the crawl space. Make it happen. Yeah. This is kind of, that's kind of alluding to an idea I have for my off season recaps. FYI. Oh, so now you're going to start taking the serialized format? Cool. No, 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 no. It's, Fine. it'll be nothing like what you're doing, Tom. <laughs> I bring you what? into, sorry. What? Like, oh, no. No. You said completely you different. It. I'm referencing right. the movie angle. The movie angle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I do the super cut of the East and West. I did it of the East. I'll do it for the West. I combine all the episodes. It was three and a half hours last year. It's probably going to be longer. Oh, Lordy. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. We got a Holly 2. Double hundo. Calrissian. Wow. Give me a good excuse not to see my parents today. Mom's supposed to call me in 45 minutes. I uh, prefer to spend uh, New Year's Eve at home with my cats and peeps like you. Johnny John John! <laughs> That's for you, Perna, by the way. That's yours. Johnny John John! Woo! Woo! <laughs> there you go. That's, Holly. That's you, Perna. That's you. That is insane. That's nine scooter Elways. Nine. nine. Nine scooter Elways. Holly, you are a legend. So now we need I to give her a reason not to go see your parents. Yeah. Uh, Holly, I hope your Chiefs beat my Broncos in the final week of the season. That's the best gift I can give back to you. Cat person, we got two cats here. And my wife and I prefer to spend New Year's with our cats as well. I'm trying to think of an excuse, Holly. Would hemorrhoids work? Ooh. Hmm. I would or, say hold on. mom calls in 45 minutes and you just say, oh, my God, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. And then just hang up and turn your phone off. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you, you could always play the covid card. That's pretty safe bet. Yeah. I, the karma like, the, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you don't want to risk that. Yeah. So I, I feel like you could. I feel like you could rock with it though. Hemorrhoids might work. Yes. There Hemorrhoids. we go. Yeah. Mecca fish. More bad. The, news, the, the secret to like a, a nice medical excuse is you got to pick something that's embarrassing and yep. maybe not, you know, every day. It's like, oh, my tummy hurts. No, no, no. I think I have an ulcer and <clears throat> I'm going to the doctor to get, I have to drink the chalky milk. They're going to take a picture of my stomach and that's just what I'm doing today. Yep. Yeah. And hemorrhoids. Yeah. My car won't start because uh, my car got stolen. Got stolen because by somebody famous. Start. <laughs> <laughs> Make the lie so hard to prove or disprove. You got it. Anyway, Tom, uh, we are running very long here. We did it. We did it. We did Folks. it together last show of 2021 i appreciate everyone who tunes into this show who likes subscribes comments donates 
all that thing. It's it's phenomenal. I want to thank Brandon Perna for jumping on board. One of the best people I know, rocking and rolling. And I'm proud to do the show with you, buddy. Appreciate you. I'd like to thank Brandon Perna as well. You should in honor of John Elway thanking John Elway when he was firing John Fox. <laughs> That's another clip we got to get. Uh, and yes, 100% appreciate Tom doing the show with Tom. He is relentless, always shows up, never even got to question it. Best dog dad of the year. Every morning, getting the bandages changed for his little pup before the show started most of the time. Appreciate it. Uh, David, Holly. You guys are amazing. Appreciate Great. you coming over. I know you're oh, yeah. grassy posse, number one, but pornographer, hell, I'll take top 20 in that list. <laughs> Been a good year. But folks, thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassi. I'll be I'll be putting out a video later, and then also I'll be doing a Q&A early, like 5 p.m. Eastern. 5 p.m. Eastern. Okay. Hell yeah. Tom Grassi, Brandon Perna, happy freaking fracking new year. This is GPS. And for the final time this year, you've been navigated. And you've reached your destination.